You know, it never ceases to amaze me just how much space a completely disassembled vehicle can take up. And I didn't even tear this one completely down. It was a running, driving truck. I drove it every day. I kept it in good repair. I've gone far beyond whatever what I planned on doing already, as it is. But uh, anyway, without a doubt, one of the best parts of any project is the day you can finally start pulling parts out of storage or you know whittling down the pile that always wants to avalanche down on you or take up all that room you know so I think we're finally getting to that point So we have our freshly painted cab just waiting back there, just crouching like a tiger, wanting to pounce on this chassis, you know what I mean? But um, we got to wait. We're going to attack this thing just like the assembly line would have attacked it. Um, we're going to put everything that I can afford at this point that's difficult to get to once the body's on, we're going to put that on. The engine, transmission, drive shaft, all that stuff will be coming and I'll bring you along for it. Don't worry. But right now I'm going to focus on the fuel system and relocating the tank like a Suburban clear and back. So what I've done, I have hauled this out to the pressure washer, pressure washed it real good. This was a running, driving, reliable truck, kept in good repair. So not much needed to be done other than just cleaning it up. So I did that. I threw some Rust-Oleum paint in its general direction. Um, the one line I took out was going to the charcoal canister from the sending unit to the charcoal canister, clear up front. I took that line out because we're going to do something different. So right now we are going to begin with two new lines going as far back as they'll reach towards the tank. Then we are going to mock up the tank where I want it to be. Um, we will probably bring the poor old bed in. 
set it down and see what we need to do with the filler I have some ideas if this not is not gonna work some of them are crazier than others now because I took the vent line out going to the charcoal canister I had more room in my clamps on the frame so I snipped about an inch of half inch EPDM rubber hose snuck that in the factory clamps bolted them back down so they don't rattle and squeak that'll be good to go now my suction and return lines are 3 8 and quarter inch respectively what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip them off right here at this last bend and we will put a flare fitting connector in there these are the longest uh, tubes that my parts house had in stock they are uh, 60 inches 5 foot so they're gonna get me about here at the shock absorber at the back that'll leave about two feet worth of fuel line between the steel lines and my fuel tank sending unit which will be okay um, if it was another foot of steel line I'd be happier but I don't think it's worth putting another flare fitting connection another splice in it in other words uh, just to take up that little bit so we're gonna be happy with this I think oh and that'll also give me room to mount a fuel filter solid to the frame right above the rear axle so that'll be okay All right, so I've got my two factory lines flared. Didn't want to flare too well on those original steel lines, but I think, judging by the ring we left in the brass fitting, I think we got it to where it'll seal. If not, we'll just go back and try her again. Uh, my two new lines here, I, I cut off the end, took off one of the flare fittings, used it on each of these. So that's where those went. This kick, this dog leg, goes up where the frame goes up over the axle. You can feed these through. We'll go ahead and at least get these started here. I've got a little got a little bend on this end to accommodate where they need to go. There we go. Tighten those up. Now I picked up some of these rubber line clamps. Find in any electrical section of a hardware store. And we're just going to add those. I think I will probably kind of stick down on the bottom of the frame rail here. Just using some self drilling quarter inch screws. And then I'll Hit it with a grinder on the other side once I'm done and uh, take the point off of them.
Okay, so I have the hard portions of the new fuel line going in there all done. Hard as in steel lines, not rubber, okay. Got our nice connections, got three of these rubber line clamps in there. Everything's nice and solid. I wouldn't mind a fourth, but at the very end, but right in line with the shock, and I don't want to do that. It's pretty, pretty well secure, so I'm not too worried about it. Like I say, I'll probably put a filter right in there. There you go. Short piece of rubber, short piece of rubber going to our sending unit. So that'll be okay. Um, I'll also take a flap disc to the back side of those self-drilling screws, blunt them, paint the threads. You'll never know what they are. Not that it matters. Now this is an 86 square body GMC, second to last year of the body style. They were still using saddle tanks up here, tucked up underneath the cab, or at least halfway underneath the cab. Um, I would have had to buy two new saddle tanks. I wouldn't have mind, minded using the system. There's a lot more fuel lines involved, more electronics, twice the sending units, twice the tanks, twice the rubber filler hose. Um, it's a pain to uh, get out sending units to hook and unhook them if your cab is down. They're just kind of a pain. Um, these were lined with the plastic covers underneath dirt, sand, whatever else, vegetation, small animals have built up between the steel tank and the plastic liner and rotted pinholes through the bottom of the tanks. So I had to replace tanks. The selector switch left to right which would have been located right here. All the electronics and fuel lines right in here. Um, those are known for going bad on a guy. When I parked this truck, everything was still working. I mean, it sounded vaguely like man of war going through a wood chipper, but you get the point. It was, it was gravelly. It was uh, loud and crunchy and whatever. Um, so I've decided just to go with the one tank that reduces all that stuff that you would have to worry about or possibly go back to. I don't necessarily like modifications to vehicles. I don't do a lot of it. Um, that's just personally me. But this is one exception apparently I'm willing to make. So I've got an 86 Suburban fuel tank. I am going to have to get a little creative with the filler neck. Sending units are exactly the same. They're, they're exactly right. I'm going to have to uh, make a decision as far as the vent tube that went up to the charcoal canister. We will do that. Um, figure out filler. That's going to be the main thing. So right now I've got this rear cross member that's from day one of me owning this truck. It's been bowed out like that. I don't know what a guy the Duke boys were after him or they were driving. I don't know, but something happened to that rear cross member. Um, so I've got my port of power. I'm going to pull that back in square. We've got another bracket down here. That was um, probably for the spare tire carrier that I never had. So that needs to come out. I will probably reuse it if I can or get a piece of angle iron or something over here. Um, to get the other end of my straps, which I need to make as well. And then I have a, a bracket riveted to the frame here for my rear brakes. So I'm going to have to relocate that, snip off the end of the steel line for the brakes, make sure the rubber hose is still going to work and everything. Um, but for now, let's focus in on this cross member. I imagine a guy needed to tow a a buddy out of a sticky situation, out of a ditch or whatever, and this was the result. Um, so I've just got it chained to that well reinforced cross member up there, and I've got the chain coming up from underneath, so hopefully that helps curl as it pulls. I don't know, we'll see. Probably need to use the hammer as we go along with this.
Now I have it hanging out here from ratchet straps pretty much where I want to be. Obviously I'm going to have rubber lining on the corners. I've got the spare tire bracket hanger thing. And it looks to me like if I bolt that up underneath the top top leg of the frame rails like so that's going to be just about perfect on the top side. So what I can do is just weld some short little brackets with holes off the front here to grab my straps and then on the leg of this rear brace and that ought to turn out pretty good. I've just got to keep everything. This is my biggest concern right here. From this hole to this hole, there's a there's a brace underneath the floor of the bed. And from what it looks like at this point, I may be my my sending unit, this hump right here, may be just a half an inch above uh, my frame so that'll interfere so I may have to notch out that brace underneath the frame to make clearance for that I also don't know what I'm going to run into here um, but we're going to figure all this out Well, it's a great day to be inside. It was negative seven degrees Fahrenheit this morning. Fahrenheit, little known fact, I believe, was Horace's, Horace Height's younger brother. Horace Height being an American band leader. Fahrenheit is the lesser known of history, you know. He was always sick in bed running a temperature, so Horace had to go out and make a living for the family. You see, it pays to pay attention in school, kids. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been making a lot of the little brackets and hangers and everything, all the little fabrication work that I need to do. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll make some straps. Okay, actually, before I make the straps, I'm going to finish this old tire hanger. That's going to be our new front tank mount or strap bracket brace thing. So I made these two little angles to weld on the front of that, and that'll be our hook point for the front of the straps. Ought to work nice. And then these are all going to get welded on the ends of our stainless strap. And then this dude here is my fuel filter mount, just like so. I've got slots 
top and bottom in it so I can run a hose clamp around it. I believe I will just weld that directly inside the frame rail. it will be a permanent fixture in there and that ought to be just fine. Probably remove the tank and weld that on after that's all checked out. For now I'm going to weld all of this stuff. Who got this table all red? Good sick. It's like a Mars Fab Shop. Alrighty, I have determined that I need roughly 39 inches going underneath the tank from bracket to bracket, front to back. I'm going to give myself uh, some slop. I'm going to make 38 inch straps. Um, and I'm actually going to cut this piece of stainless. Uh, this is just cast off material from here at work. We make a lot of tank mounts, tank saddles, attach them to farm machinery. We have lots of cast off pieces like this. This is just, um, uh, I forget what it is, 14 gauge maybe, stainless. I wish I had some stainless angle or like I said I could put quarter inch stainless plate on the water jet. Could have cut these out then broke them at 90 degrees but I just wanted to be in here working. Didn't want to mess with doing all that. So we're going to use mild steel and we'll paint them. I should tell you this is all just mocking this up to see if the bed will even go on and to help me figure out how I can get the filler neck to work and what I need to do there. So I'm going to cut this at 37 and a half. Give myself an extra half inch because these little brackets are going to hang off the end of the strap a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run over to the other shop, snip these off on the iron worker, and I will come back and weld them up.
Now, as I said, everything's just getting mocked up. Um, everything will come back apart completely, get painted. I'll put rubber in here, rubber along the front corner, completely line my straps with rubber. But for now, we're going to throw the bed on. Well, the old thing is on. Boy, it makes me sad to see it in this state, but that's why we're working on it. But poor old thing. Anyway, the reason what the reason we're here is to confirm my biggest fear, which I kind of knew this would be the case, but just had to make sure. You see our filler filler neck is right along the same the seam line there of the inner fender above the tire there and the neck on the tank is pretty much where'd my light go? I don't know if you can see that. Neck on the tank is pretty much exactly level with that and actually it's gonna get worse because I have no weight on the front end yet so that'll go down, this will go down this will actually go up slightly so just not gonna work how it is, unfortunately. Now, I could do the dreaded two-tank contemporary Ford uh, door. Eh, don't really want to do that, but that is an option. Just cut that out, move it over here, and patch that. Or I could weld both doors shut, mud over them, paint it. Another option I've seen guys do on these projects is they abandon all that altogether. They come in the bed and they put in a little filler down here somewhere. Another option would just be come through straight through the bed. I've never liked that option. That's just not what I want to do. Now this option's a little silly. It's a little crazy, but what if we, you know, snuck that up in there 
and then, you know, you know, uh, did did that old number? I oh, it'd be a lot of fab work and a lot of a lot of time and energy spent on just the filler door. But wouldn't that be kind of cool? Now another option a guy could look into is maybe say like an old uh, Chevelle style gas tank with the filler net coming out the back behind the license plate. That may work. Um, then you would have to figure out what and how to do with your rear bumper. Um, certainly couldn't use a stock truck bumper. I don't know, but this is what I have and this is what we're working with. Other than that, I think I've said it 75 times at least already, but everything back off, clean everything up, paint everything. I'm out of Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black. I mean, that stuff to me is like something important, net necessary, something I need that's important. It's necessary. It's like yeah that's a good analogy. Um, so we'll be sure to coat everything with paint, reposition the brake line, not a big deal, just gonna cut it and reflare it just like you saw me do with the fuel lines. Let me know what you think about the uh, fuel filler like I said if you really want to see it go out through the tail light, I think that'd be pretty cool. A pretty cool uh, modification. You know, if you've been around here a while, you know I don't go in much for mods. I just, I like to restore cars to original, but this was one exception that I really felt like I wanted to do. So, we're going to have a little fun with it. Not a big deal. Um, we have a lot to do on this truck. Stick with me. Next, I want to put engine, transmission, driveline, cab on. I really want to get to that bed. Um, so maybe once the cab is back on and we've confirmed that the 327 is going to run, because we still haven't run it, you know, uh, then maybe we'll turn our attention to the bed and get that sad, that sad sack back into shape. So. Stick with me. We're going to keep working. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Well, I haven't finished putting the video together yet, and I guess I got really ambitious this morning, so I thought I'd show you my relocating the brake line bracket. There you can see I moved it ahead about four inches, cut about the same off the end of the line, and reflared it. Everything should be good to go. I snipped off the back corner of the leg um, so that I have no chance of this line vibrating and wearing a hole through it. So we'd be good to go. Just need to get a new line, rubber line, when the time comes. But that is pretty much it. What you think? And now that I'm really going, I want to say once again to all you humans out there, I really do appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. We suggest 
that you like and subscribe now.